What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Vontae, the first, the day portion of Mugen Eclipse. And it's me, Mr. Twitchy, the night portion of Mugen Eclipse. We are here today with episode three of season seven of My Hero Academia today. Last episode, insane. Um, they did a great job with the animation. Uh, once again, to all who are new to the channel, or just for a reminder for people who have been here before, we both read the manga. I'm all caught up, Twitchy caught up to a certain part portion in this season so you guys will know once we get there but um yeah what's some of your thoughts for the last episode though that shit was wild i just could not believe the variety of the osts that they used there was some new stuff there's some classic stuff in there the sound design was incredible it's like is this ufo table or bones i can't tell or maybe david productions who's to say but yes the sound design was incredible star and stripe gave her final sacrifice for an extension on the homework project i mean the, the fate of the world but yeah she's a real one hanji's va popped off again what else is new yep, she got and her yeah, bag quick she bag she's got her bag <laughs> uh and then shigaraki got away at the end because he was able to i guess transfer out new order to someone else or maybe not i don't know let's get into this next episode man my hero academia season seven episode three let's get into it right about now. I like that, the last embers of her life. Mm -hmm. That boy off one said, Kathleen Bator! <laughs> <Bain -tor. laughs> that boy is dying. Look at Toby's face. She's, <laughs> she's <a> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're sharing in someone else's resentment. Also, it's always funny that, like, all four is, like, just fucked up, fucked up. He's still got to have that shit around him. <laughs> like, you got all the quirks in the goddamn world. There's no quirk that can heal you. I might fuck them up bad. <laughs> I like how they're doing that. Oh, oh boy. shit! That was uh, cluster. Did not remember that. So it's so it puts the kitchen. Arsenal Tamanish, the Dojita, and the Sasser. Nanka, who making a That's some MC type of stuff. No, that's coming in the MCV. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I always loved that Ragdoll's quirk is like was mad important that search quirk. Mm -hmm. Like that that now that's some stakes right there. A hero losing their ability and the villain using it all the time. That's a pretty good stake in my opinion. It's also a great like foreshadowing moment because that was not brought up for the longest time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> I like the voice acting right now. That was a uh, manga. It looks oh. it literally like the manga panel, like exactly the same. The lighting in the forest. But oh, see, like this shit. <laughs> this voice acting, man. Mm -hmm. Like he's got snot in his nose in the yep. studio. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second time they've done that type of shot. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. I'm really loving the, like the the audio, the volume in this episode. The mixing is fantastic. Yeah, it's like very silent. The OSCs are mostly si silent in the background. Then they progressively get a little louder and more intense. But the voice acting has been crisp. And they even going back to saying how both of them are similar when he was doing all that weird shit in that one episode. Yeah, yeah. and then the letter that Deku wrote to them. Mm -hmm. cool. That's one thing I don't think people pay attention to in this series. Deku has a lot of parallels with a lot of characters, whether they're villains, yep. peers, mentors. It's, it's a lot of parallels. 
Damn, I love how Bones did. I didn't expect, cause like in the manga, I wasn't like the biggest fan of this. I was just kind of like, okay, well, finally we're here. That's how my reaction sure. was. But like, the way that they're doing it here, it makes they're making it even more important. Like, where's oh, this is a serious, this is very serious right now. <laughs> yeah, the artwork was fantastic because I didn't read this, guys. But there was a lot more emotion to that scene than I was expecting. You buy another one. <laughs> I remember when he said that. <laughs> that I remember vividly. Ah, Domino. Mama and Papa were in the same way. The two of them were in the same way. The two of them were in the same way. I love the stylistic choices that they're making. He's just outlined. We need a what if series of all four wasn't a villain and he was a hero because he would still have a lot of, um, like, he'll be looked at as a villain too. Mm -hmm. Like, he was giving out quirks and then. Yeah, I think that would be a pretty cool what if. Look at the sat the red. Hey, this shit's crazy. Whoever directed this episode, get them on the rest of the season. Yes. Please. Yes. yes. This episode has been directed very well. Danger sense. Ooh. Oh. I might use that as a screenshot. <laughs> For the thumbnail. Laser! Boom. Full counter. <laughs> wow. Wow. Look how they animate that. That's fire. This feels almost like a different series. Yeah. Just Damn. like the gentle. Yep. Look at that being a hero. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna make you cry. I'm gonna cry. You're gonna cry. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was so powerful. He didn't want to be right. And just thinking his perspective too, like what if Deku was from a family similar uh, similar circumstance and Alfron gave him a quirk and similar shit happened. <laughs> Damn. Damn, he just killed my boy Obanai like that? <laughs> the black wow. and white stripes? Heart <laughs> <laughs> of a hero. オルフォンは言われてやったのかよ。違うだろ。Bring her back. Wow. Take my hand. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Dude. Wait my boy. The moment. <laughs> my boy Fauci, that boy been going through it. You seen the memes on Twitter of him no, no, beginning no. the series to now that boy. I back boys <laughs> going through it. Oh, yeah. look at Sansa the cat. Oh, <laughs> that is a oh, cool man. The... That is a professional. Show some respect. 
Oh, look at Nezu. Oh. <laughs> We just went over this. This is your ace in the sleeve. Mm -hmm. And make the boy feel like he's still helping out the crew and he's yeah. still part of the class. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, no. <laughs> what? We no, that felt really quick. Um, no way. No way. I, wow. I'm looking at the recording time 24. Really? No, I genuinely, it genuinely felt like that was like 15 minutes. 17 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Damn. I, got I was not expecting to get emotional <laughs> from that. That was good. Like you said, the direction for this episode, please, whoever directed this, please, I hope you're in most of these, the, the you know, at least the most pivotal mm -hmm. episodes, too, going forward, because, bro, that was good. Made that me enjoy it a lot so more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man. These villains, man. That's another thing, too, though, like, I will say Horikoshi, I don't think people give him enough props for this, but he usually, like, he works with what you typically wouldn't see from, like, um, like our hero comics and Marvel, DC, and whatnot. Like, he works in, in ways where it's like, okay, there's some people that have been, like, used, like Aoyama, then you have people like Shigaraki, Toga, Dabi that became villains. The way they became villains, you got uh, Gentle Criminal. Like, you don't see that in other comics where it's like, there are certain. The heroism in this, I think, I like a lot. It's not just about fighting and beating them, it's about actually tackling why these people became villains. And I much appreciate like that. All a lot. for One used the analogy of like, there's many paths. There's many paths in this world, whether you're a hero, you're an anti hero, you're a villain, you're an anti villain. There's just so many different motivational factors that play into how someone's life goes. And, like, you can always change. I yeah. I think I've had this conversation, maybe not with Vontae before, but in terms of, like, what it would take to change a person. For me personally, I feel like it would have to be something, like, monumental in my life or those close to me to where I would have to make a significant change. It's either laziness or potentially I'm just comfortable in who I am as a person at this point in my life. But for Yuga, he is at a pivotal moment. Like, the decision that you make here could affect literally the fate of the world. And for him to have all this guilt over the years in terms of, like, betraying his his fellow students in the school that he's grown up with, that he, they've accepted him into their lives and for him to be saying like oh you still can be a hero that's why i love deku as an mc uh top mm -hmm. character for me has been from nearly the start um if it wasn't all my but yeah i just i love the dynamics of this show and how they write the characters into the situations and kind of where they can go from there exactly um it's one of those things where because even with uh like shigaraki you know deku's like hmm like I see a kid crying in there like i want to save him yes i might have to kill him that's like those are the two uh, options or two choices mm -hmm. and it's one of those things where um and we've seen shigaraki's backstory and whatnot with his quirk and how that all went about and then now you see with r for one pretty much you know grooming him to be this fucking monster <laughs> and whatnot and now he literally is that and he wants to use his body for his you know for his bidding for his doings and whatnot and it's like it's Something I don't typically see a lot in other uh, like com like hero comics where the villains usually in those comics they start out um, with a very simple change like maybe something they a power source made them that way you know whatever power that they had ended up getting granted or they fell into something and then boom or um, and just uh, like going from like crime and all that or just going with what they knew growing up with their surroundings or environment but in this series a lot of these people come from good situations that turn bad with like one instance where their quirk 
either their something with their quirk, like you got Toga with her situation, or Dobby with his quirk, and then you know other outside elements within family, like with Endeavor and what he was doing with his kids. And I think that um, it, I remember we talked about this too back way back when we was on uh, Townsley's channel, our boy Townsley for the Hero City podcast. We were talking about how like in this series, it's not really about the fights. It's not. It, it's not. It's like the altercations, but it's, it's more so about how to, you know, um, kind of dead a situation and make, like, and try to figure out a better way. Like, Deku, as a MC, a lot of people didn't really appreciate the Gentle Criminal arc, but I think that was, like, a huge moment, moment for Deku because now he's starting to see that, like, oh, wow, there's a lot, a lot of these villains come from situations where they weren't villains. He was literally wanting to be a hero at one point, and then things didn't work out, and an accident happened. Now look what he's doing. So it's like Deku is trying to see every. He was literally he's literally looking at every single um, aspect and pathway for everybody, even against muscular for the second time. Remember, he was saying how like um, like had he known what made muscular or anybody like him the way that he is. If he was there, he could save him. But some people are too far gone where it's like, okay, well, now we need to reform a new, I guess, like, uh, ideology in society to help these people. Shigaraki, he was looking for somebody that can help him after his whole situation of murdering his family. Nobody would help him. So I, I like that Deku, he's, like, in the, the, the front of this new, I guess, like, regime or this new um, ideology for movement yeah movement for heroes and uh civilians because really at the end of the day it's all about that it's about saving these people so they don't become villains and such not just to scare people to not become villains because you're just whooping their ass or nothing like that you know like all might he was obviously putting a lot of people in jail because he was just that guy he can stop every situation then when, we, when he wasn't here we have to kind of you know compensate or we have to kind of find different ways to attack that because nobody is going to be like all might they make it known in the series time and time again nobody can really be all might even deku in ways he can't be all might at least not physically but he has ways that he can help that even all might couldn't have done so there's sometimes he couldn't reach out to people so i don't know that's just one thing i wanted to say because that's one of the things i love about my hero that i don't think a lot of people uh appreciate as much so yeah I think there's going to be a lot of growing pains when you go from, uh, I'll give you guys an analogy. So All Might was kind of like a nuke, and I don't mean in terms of like his power or destructive ability, but more so in terms of the fact that he was a nuclear deterrent against all crime. And Albert Einstein had a favorite, a famous quote that was like, I don't know what weapons World War III will be fought with, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. There has to be a reset. And with All Might being removed from the picture, the only way for that to happen is for society to crumble down and then you build it up from the ground up. There is no other way. It's going to be growing pains. You're going to have to go through these trials and tribulations. And I like how Deku is bringing along the entirety of the class. He's learned from All Might's mistakes. And that's what makes him better as a protege to his master is that you not only learn from your own mistakes, but you also learn from the mistakes of those who came before you. He literally cannot do it all by himself. I know that was a conversation that he had with All Might at the end of like in season one, maybe, but he's definitely more so extending the hand, no pun intended, to those around him to help pull them up so that they can then extend their other hand to those that are below them. So I just love the, the saving of the villains. And I'll, I'll be the first to admit, when I first saw at the end of the PLF war arc to where Deku was like, I'm going to save Shigaraki, it kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. Even with Deku being my favorite character, even with the themes of the show, it just didn't feel like it was possible. And I really have to commend Horikoshi for sticking with that theme, because obviously the show's not over yet, but from what I've seen... From that point up until where I left off in the manga and where I think it's going to be going from there on out, he has definitely made it believable to where I can see Deku saving Shigaraki in some form or fashion. I don't know the mechanics of how that's going to work, but I think more so now I'm accepting of it than I was when it was initially like first thrown in our face. Hmm. That, for me, um, I... 
I still wasn't I still wasn't a big fan of him like saving them only because Shigaraki was like where he at where he's at now I'm like okay he is technically long like, you're like him Dobby like yeah Toga I was like I think there's I don't know. I feel like there was some there there's some hope for her. <laughs> That's just me personally. But like those two, for example, I'm like I don't know. But the one thing that I do like is the fact that Deku accept he accepts that he might have to kill him if he can't save him. Yep. And to me, even if he still saves him or, or whatever he does, kill him, save him, whatever the case may be, I just appreciate that he's like you know what, I might not get what I want, and I like that he he was logical. You know, that's just the reality. You know. Um, so yeah, Deku, once again, we all know he, this series gets a lot of shit, and Deku himself too, but like, when you really pay attention to his character and his growth, like, what other MC is really connecting to people in this kind of way? He connects with anybody. Like I said, mentors, villains, peers, civilians, like, <laughs> but, uh, and, and, like, his parallels with All Might, I think that's what makes Deku even more cap uh, he's more interesting to me too because All Might is like that the typical comic book Superman type character even though he has a lot of like nuances and stuff with his character especially when he can't be that no more but I love that Deku is like a different like he doesn't need to be a symbol of peace really what he needs to be is like the symbol of hope essentially you know, I would say the symbol of own. people that too yeah I think it's in, I think it's in the same realm yeah, but yeah, same thing. I agree <laughs> The people's champ, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to be the rock. Champ. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, you got anything else to say before we head out? No. It was great to have a more so of a long drawn out discussion for this show because the first one's like, oh, pretty colors, stars and stripes, this is Shigaraki. <laughs> like my heart is pumping. But this one we finally get more into like the emotional or like the psychological aspect of the show. And like Monte said earlier, I think it's just an underrated aspect of my hero. So you guys know the drill, man. Pull up every week for the My Hero Academia. Um, we got Demon Slayer as well. So every week, those two will be out. So stay tuned for all that and more content coming in, too, going into the summer. But I hope you guys all have a good one. So please stay safe, stay healthy, stay clean. See you guys on the next video. And peace.